The Brothers of Destruction got a promo. They show Triple H saying he and Austin were the most dominant duo in WWF history. And Taker thought this was funny. It says, all three titles are going to be on the line of Backlash. Tonight, we don't have to worry about that. We can just see, just see who the most dominant team is. So he wants to fight tonight. But instead, Edge and Christian interrupt. They say, you are one-time tag team champions. We are seven-time tag team champions. That makes us seven times as great as you. And you only beat us because you threatened and set fire to William Regal's office. We do not have time to prepare or study tapes. And we know you won't give us a title shot, but we'll, we'll fight right now. And they make their way down to the ringside, or to the ring. And lo and behold, they do in fact fight. It goes exactly how you would expect. They are summarily dispatched. But then Hunter and Austin ambush Taker and Kane with chairs and beat them down. And then Edge and Christian disappear. They don't actually get to be part of this beatdown. They were merely bait. Yeah, I realize that Undertaker is like a huge baby face. And, you know, Kane's his brother, so he's a baby face by association. But just watching this opening segment, and Hunter and Austin are just going on and on and on. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Undertaker comes out, they do this promo, and then heels come out. And then a fight starts, and then more heels come out. Austin and Triple H. They absolutely beat the living hell out of the Undertaker and Kane. And they just beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him. Heat, heat, heat. And of course, nobody comes out to save the Undertaker because there's no heroes. There's no top babyface outside of the Undertaker. This is just a depressing show. Michael Cole tells us that the trainer has informed him that The Undertaker and Kane were shaken up in the opening segment. Kane has re-injured his elbow. Shaken up. They have been shut down for the evening, but they'll be ready for Sunday's match. The two-man power trip arrives, confirms Taker and Kane are done for the night, and move on by. So after the break, the two-man power trip come out for a promo. Let me start with Hunter's to promo To Vince's here. music, but go ahead. Yes, well, and they must have had a big argument about whose music this week, so they just decided to come out to Vince's. So Hunter says, Kane and Undertaker ran their mouths about how dominant they were. All the belts are on the line at Backlash. We own the Intercontinental and World titles. We will win the tag titles on Sunday. This ring belongs to us. It took him like five fucking minutes to spit <laughs> this out. It just took fucking forever. And finally they go to Steve Austin... And thank God this dude was spitting fire here in this promo. And he just goes nuts, vows to beat the ass of Undertaker and Kane if they got the guts. You ain't got the guts to come out, he says. I liked when he talked about Undertaker coming out in his little motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And out come, of all people, the Hardys, to which I wrote, and I quote, These poor bastards! <laughs> and I knew. was not wrong. Yeah, so... Hardys get to cut a promo. It was fine. They say you called out two guys you knew were out, but we're here. We never quit. We always keep coming back again and again and again. We're still alive. The only difference between you and us is you'll see us coming. And they go down to the ring to the fight, but then they are under uh, interrupted by Kane's pyro. And I thought, okay, these four guys will come out here together and Austin Hunter will run away. Silly, naive young Vincent. What a fool. Taker and Kane come out. Jeff and Matt step backwards and get out of their way. And they all go down to the ring, not side by side. No, the, hundred, the, the Hardys are in the back. Where, if you're watching the show, you can only be led to believe they belong. And then, yes, the two-man power trip ran away. Dude, later on in the show, they get the heat on Kane <laughs> in an eight-man tag. Yeah. Dude, Kane... In a match with Matt and Jeff Hardy, Kane yes. is the baby face in peril. <laughs> he certainly was. He's, by the way, the only masked guy on top of that, so you can't even see his fucking face as he's selling. I know we've been ranting about this for weeks now, and we're going to rant about it for more, but about how how they do everything they can to make the top four guys the top four and everyone else just miles and miles below them. Mm -hmm. We get back-to-back -back segments here of Hunter and Austin giving Edge and Christian a brow beating. 
And then we go to the babyface locker room where Taker is not chewing out the Hardys, but he's definitely in charge and leading the leading the strategy session or whatever. And all I could think was, we were watching the Superstars episodes from 1992 where Razor Ramon debuted and did like two squashes and was thrown onto a team with Ric Flair. And he was never the green guy or the young kid or the student. He was a peer with Ric Flair as soon as they were on screen together. And you watch these and you think Edge and Christian and Jeff and Matt Hardy are all, at best, B-teamers. Probably less than that. It's made abundantly clear to you in every single segment. Main event. Edge and Christian and Triple H and Steve Austin versus Undertaker and Kane and the Hardy Boys. These dudes were working their asses off. <laughs> and I think part of it is they start just a big giant four, uh, eight-way brawl. And the crowd is white hot. And so they start working harder. And the harder they work... The crazier the crowd grows, and the crazier the crowd goes, the harder they work. It was just kept feeding on itself and building. Steve Austin is the biggest star in wrestling, and he is just bumping on his bad neck like oh. it's going out of style, which it was, by the way. He's just working his ass off. By the way, I don't want to be that guy, but the entrances for this match took like 20 minutes. Yep. You couldn't have had Undertaker and Kane come out together and give like nope. five more minutes to the... Benoit match. <laughs> Dude, fuck. There you go. And then yeah. heat on Kane for there like the, 10 minutes. There was a long heat segment on Kane, which, yes, it was odd. The crowd was chanting for Lita, who was not out there. They actually did a hot tag on Matt, who got to be a comeback on Hunter for a little while. And the crowd's like, yay, but we want to take her and Kane to make the comeback. Well, the funny thing was, when Matt first touches hands for the tag, there is zero reaction. Dead silence. But then he actually starts firing up on Triple H, and they, they got into it. Yeah. I think they figured he was going to get the tag and get immediately pedigreed. Probably. And then when he fired up, they were like, fuck, he's actually doing something. So they cheered. But there was a delayed reaction. So it breaks down into an eight-way. Taker hits a monstrous one-armed choke slam on Triple H. It was incredible. But Edge takes out Taker. Austin stuns Matt. He puts Hunter on top. And yes, Hunter pins Matt to win. I guess the only thing that really surprised me was that he didn't hit the pedigree. That is amazing. I mean, <laughs> frankly. For those of you that don't know, spoiler here. Pay-per-view coming up is all belts on the line. Mm-hmm. It is it is Triple H and Steve Austin as world and intercontinental champion against Undertaker and Kane, who are the tag champions. So if Undertaker and Kane lose, then Hunter and Austin are also the tag team champions. Right. And I guess if, if Undertaker or Kane win, I don't know what happens. They get both belts? Whoever gets the pin is the world the champion. Title, gets the title of whoever they pin. I see. Okay. What are the other guys? Does he get the other guy's title or no? No. So if Triple H gets pinned, Austin is still world champion. Okay. All right. Anyway, point of all of this is Austin and Hunter win. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why the fuck did Hunter need to get a pin here? Because he's Hunter. I know that, but it was a rhetorical and, and, question. More, more importantly, more importantly, he's Matt. <laughs> yeah. had to make sure everyone knew <laughs> that Matt and, Har- Matt and Jeff Hardy, and by proxy, Edge and Christian, were not at the level of these guys. Don't, don't, uh, they're in the main event, everyone, but don't get confused. They're not They're main getting the rub by being in there and getting beaten by the real stars. Yes. Mm. Sure, that's the... Uh, yes. 